Hey guys, it's Layla. Today we'll speak about the abdomen. Remember the number nine with the abdomen. So you have nine compartments and you've got nine layers. Starting with the compartments, so you've got nine divided by three. So on the top you have the epigastric region and then the right and the left hypochondriac region. Then in the center you've got the umbilical region then right and left lumbar region. At the bottom you've got the hypogastric region and then right and left iliac region. All right, once again, the middle ones, epigastric, umbilical, hypogastric, then right and left hypochondriac, right and left lumbar, and then right and left iliac. Moving on to our nine layers, we will start with SS F. Previously uh, we would do triple S but now we have double S and then an F or you can remember it as seals swim fast. So the S it stands for the skin. The second S stands for subcutaneous tissue. We have the superficial layer known as the camper fascia and you also have the deep layer known as scarpus fascia. Then you have the F, which is for the investing fascia or the deep fascia. So you have superficial, intermediate and deep. Three layers of the investing fascia. That is what SSF stands for. Okay, those were the first four superficial layers. Now we'll go to the next five deep layers. The mnemonic goes, only one tiger enter the park. So the first O stands for the external oblique muscle. The second O is for the internal oblique. The tiger is for the transversus abdominis. Entered is for the extra peritoneal fat. The T stands for the transversalis fascia. And the PARC, the P stands for the parietal peritoneum. Okay, once again, the nine layers. Seals is skin. Swim is subcutaneous tissue, camper fascia and scarpa fascia. Fast is the investing deep fascia. Only external oblique. One, internal oblique. Tiger, transversus abdominis, entered extraperitoneal fat, the transversalis fascia, park, parietal, peritoneum, skin, subcutaneous tissue, fascia, investing, external oblique, internal oblique, transversus abdominis, extraperitoneal fat, transversalis fascia, and parietal peritoneum. Some other things present on the abdomen, you've got the linear alba right in the center. You've got the rectus abdominis muscles. And we have spoken about the rest, the transversus abdominis, the internal oblique and the external oblique. Okay, there is something known as the arcuate line. It divides uh, the top three quarters of the abdomen from the last quarter. So above this arcuate line you've got the aponeurosis of the muscles going from the anterior and the posterior side of the rectus abdominis but below the arcuate line you've only got it going from the top so you've got a thicker anterior level. So it's important to know that there's a difference between the upper and the lower abdominal wall. Okay, now let's speak a little bit about the contents before we finish. So you can see in the right hypochondriac region, we've got the liver, the gallbladder and the right kidney. In the epigastric region, you've got the stomach, part of the liver, the pancreas, the right and left kidneys. In the left, you've got the stomach, the liver, the tip of the liver, the left kidney and the spleen. Going to the umbilical region, you've got the stomach, the pancreas, the small intestines and the transverse colon. The right lumbar, you've got the tip of the liver, the small intestines, ascending colon and the right kidney. Left lumbar, you've got the small intestines, the descending colon and the left kidney. 
hypergastric region, you've got the small intestines, the sigmoid colon, and the bladder, you can see. The right iliac, small intestines, the appendix, the cecum, and the ascending colon. And finally, the left iliac contains the small intestine, the descending colon, and the sigmoid colon. Okay, guys, that is it for this video. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye. Thank you.